really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Welcome to the show. For the past few weeks, we've been talking about how much governments can do or not do, and also how much the non-governmental sector can do to help the development of the nation. Everything is not for government to do, but government must do its part. But first, the non-governmental sector has to do its part as well. How well have they been doing it? And what are the challenges that they face? One of the things that we heard from everybody who's spoken is funding. Funding, funding, funding. Fund comes from outside of Nigeria most often, but I was lucky to find someone who I, de I describe as a development junkie, even though she's an expert in that area but she's found herself on a job that allows her to do what is closest to her heart, give grants to NGOs. I hear your ears are perking up already, but that's not why she's here, but she's here to talk about what it takes to be an NGO that makes a difference and attract the kind of fund that you require. And also, is this NGO bill good or bad? We'll be back on Seriously Speaking, if you don't go away. <laughs> Yes, welcome back. I have my four eyes on today because my guest also has four eyes. And I always admire her glasses when I see it. It's nice to have you on this show. Thank you. Osai Alile. Good morning. Nice to have you. How are you? You know, I just found out this morning that you actually did work in GT Bank. Yes, but that's years ago. Because <laughs> everything I've known that you've done has been the non-governmental sector, from yeah. Jan yeah. to Fate yeah. to Wimbis yeah. and yeah. now ACT. Yeah. What does ACT stand for? Aspire Coronation Trust. Why do you guys call it ACT? Because it's action. It's moving. It's not something that is, it stays, starts and stops. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a continuous term. Um, so that's why we actually decided to do an acronym called ACT. Yeah. My interest is the fact that when you talk about grants, the only thing you hear is Ford, Rockefeller, yes. you know, all these... The big ones. Mostly American, yes. you know. Yes. And people are complaining that the funds are drying up. Most yeah. of the NGOs, the funds are drying up. Now, to find that ACT is a fully Nigerian grant-giving organization. Yes. Is it not for profit? It's not for profit. It's not for profit, but what we do also is we, we look at it more like a social venture. Um, so even if it's not for profit, we're thinking more in terms of the fact that whoever we're giving this grant to is an impact investment for us. Oh. Um, so we're not just giving out money, we're investing in the business of the person. Mm -hmm. And we want the business to be sustainable in the long term. So anyone you talk to will tell you that uh, we just don't give money. We're asking questions, we're asking them to do things properly. We want them to run a business that is sustainable. Okay, so now you, from faith to Wimbis. Mm. When Wimbis were over, was there a limbo for you? And Wimbis, by the way, is Women in Management and Business and public service yes. today. You know, people, uh, Wimbis was a part, a hobby for me. Because I was, <laughs> yes, yeah, I was actually working. Those two years. Yes, I was working full time while doing Wimbis. Yes, Wimbis is um, more of, um, it's an executive. It's a movement. Yes, a movement. So you, you go in there with everything you have and just get the job done, regardless of where you are. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an amazing movement as well, I must mm -hmm. say. An mm -hmm. amazing movement, mm -hmm. yeah. So that time, when you Wimbis was over? Mm. I just continued work. <laughs> yes, I just went back to work like I, I, I'd been doing. You see, I, I, re I realize in life is that we, we always think that one particular position is something that we, you hold on to forever. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a position for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So when you tell yourself two years, five years, even with art, you can't be there forever. Uh, and that's what enables you as in leadership to be able to do the best that you can do while you're there at that given time. Okay, now, but you seem to be so interested in social development. Yes. And now you're thinking that they have to have the right infrastructure and the right knowledge that can help them be better. Yes. What are some of the great examples of NGO work? Because you've chosen to work now in the area of health, yes, education. Environment, uh -huh. Yes, environment, yes. We do health, environment, entrepreneurship, and leadership. Yes, I know there are quite a few work, people that are doing great work in that in those fields as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I mean, why the choice of those areas? Uh, we we also looked at the, um, of course, the SDGs now, um, and wondering what's going on with the Sustainable Development Goals. Yes, I thought. <laughs> yes, yes sorry, I just realized everybody might not know what I'm talking about. And then you now look you look at the SDGs and ask yourself in the next 
few years, where are we heading to? And what are the things that we can work with and we can focus on mm -hmm. that can help us change the way the world is being led? Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what we came up with this for. Okay, but I mean, I find it interesting though. What are the things about NGO work mm -hmm. that gets you ticking? Gosh, I think it's innate. One, one thing is innate. You know when people come talk about business and they talk, I'm so, so passionate about yes. this. It's the same thing. I, I, it's, the NGO world is a, is a passion. But it's also a business to me. It's a career. It's my life. Um, but I, it, it just makes me, I mean, when I talk about it, I talk about the work that people are doing. I get very excited because I can see the changes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I went to one of our, our grantees yesterday and I sat in with in, in all the projects that we're doing. Is in the health or? In health. We, I did two, two of them in the health um, yesterday. One in cancer and the other one in vision. Mm -hmm. And when you, and what, I mean, someone put on his glasses and was like, my goodness, I've been in bondage, bondage. And he was screaming <laughs> and he was, he was, he has never had glasses before, he was 52. And he was so excited and he thought, I, he said he thought he was going crazy, that he just couldn't see anything, that people were blowing out. Mm -hmm. These are simple things that we think, okay, it's not a big deal, but those are simple things to a certain percentage of who the society is. Absolutely. The, the other 95 percent, they, they, it's such an issue for them to go to a optician when there are other issues that they should be. They have to pay school fees and stuff like that. So when someone is giving them free glasses, mm -hmm. so with those things, it makes you so pleased and happy. Sometimes people say NGO work is like telling government not to worry, we'll do it. <gasps> no, mm -hmm. not at all, not at all. I think we all have to work together. Um, we can't work in isolation, they can't work in isolation. It's the same way that the private sector is getting involved in a lot of things as well. Uh, we all have to work together, and I think they have to see it that way as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll take a break because I would like us to talk about that bill, but first mm -hmm. I want to bring someone who's one of the beneficiaries and somebody I also know that they've done a lot of impact in the area of leadership. And so I'll take a short break and I'll return with, somebody who's gonna have this conversation along with us, He's a guy. <laughs> yes, welcome back. I've decided to make my guest catwalk for me because he's the only man on this set. And they always make women catwalk at beauty shows, right? So, Michael Ajayi, you're going to do the proper catwalk for me. Yeah, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come into my parlor. And he's trying hi, his best. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> he's, trying, he's trying his right, eh? Nice to see you. Sit Thank down. You. Welcome. Thank you. So very you know, much. I, you know, you know, Sayo, of course. Oh, sure, I yes. do. So when you went knocking on their doors for grant, did you go with a big cup or a small cup? <laughs> As always, you go with the biggest cup you can, but also go with some value. Some value, yes. having them to see. But I find your story interesting, though, Michael. Michael, I met him in Abuja maybe about eight years ago. I'm not sure now, seven or six. Maybe nine. Nine years ago, goodness gracious, was a volunteer <laughs> with then Enactors was SAIF. Yes. yes. Student yes. for... Students in, in Free Freedom, Enterprise. Students in Free Enterprise. We used to call it SAIF. Yeah. And I met him as a volunteer there, yeah. you know, trying to... It was one of their conferences. Yes, so it was a national competition at the time, the mm -hmm. regional com national competition, and I was serving as a volunteer mm -hmm. to help to organize the events and make sure that we had a successful program. Before then, I was an Enactors student, yeah, calling the actors now. Remind yeah. us of SAIF. Okay, so, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so before then, I was a SAIF student, uh -huh. and so I had run through the program for just about a year. Mm -hmm. I found about I found out about the program just before I left school, and so immediately after school, the then school then was Amadou Bele University, okay. Zaria, mm -hmm. the prestigious one. Oh gosh, we start. We start. We start. We start. Okay, and so uh, during that period, um, af right after my school. Uh, Upon graduation, the then country director, Mrs. Sadiswa Ifedi, who well, incidentally yeah, is a friend, see. yes, mm -hmm. uh, asked me to volunteer for to help put the event together. And so I volunteered, and that was when I first met you. So since then, volunteering, volunteering, today yes. you are sitting at the top of the so organization. So as a volunteer, yes, I volunteered uh, for about two years. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I started volunteering even as a student. And so, and I was doing the, the job of program staff. So that means you also have a passion for development. Absolutely, and I never knew until I became a member of yeah. this high program. So, I mean, the reason I'm going down that road is to make people understand that sometimes some of these things are not just inborn, you have to. Yes, so yes, they can be inborn, and sometimes you do not realize just what you've got inside of you until you step out of a comfort zone, mm -hmm. until you make a commitment to serve. You know, uh, it is in the place of. So it wasn't about the money. It was no. It, it, there wasn't there was any no money. money then. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all. It's about uh, providing service. It is mm -hmm. in the place of service, really, that you find yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. You know. How oh, so, sweet! It's in the place of service that you find yourself. Tweet that. Remember, <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter, and the conversation can go on. Yeah, and so for me, um, when you are not focused on money, 
the true values that you have and your passion comes forth. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's part of the things that the then country director saw and made me a part of the program. Mm -hmm. And then all along, I've been there. I mean, I've never worked anywhere else. So tell me, how does an, an actor seek to do what in particular? So an actor is in an international not-for-profit that is focused on developing leadership and entrepreneurship skills amongst the youth. And this they do through? But, uh, yeah, so how we do this really is by engaging the students um, of tertiary institutions across the world, engage them, form them into teams, and challenge them to be part of the problems, I mean, part problem of the solutions. Solving. Problem yes. solving. Yeah. Yes, problem solving. We believe that leadership is developed by doing. Mm. So you, uh, in, in the place of working, in the place of um, getting to find solutions to problems, leadership comes with. Mm -hmm. You don't need an office to be a leader. Oh. You, just, you, you, you just need a place need to make an to, impact. Yeah, a place to make an impact, mm -hmm. find a problem and mm -hmm. solve it. I find it interesting because, I mean, you've, I'm sure you've, you've been on the board or judging some of these, their competitions. Oh, yes, yes, and yes. it's amazing the kinds of things that come out. You can't even imagine. But I'm wondering, mm. how do these things scale up? Because I've, I know I've been at some, they've created some fantastic things, mm. but people need to invest in bringing them out. Like some mosquito coil out of uh, yeah. orange, orange peel. peels. That was a, that was a project from uh, 2011, mm -hmm. uh, the team from Benue State University yes. then. Yes. What they found was in their community, um, a lot of people, because they're a riverine community, and it's also a rural community. A lot of people were all, always falling down with um, malaria, malaria yeah. and in some cases dying because they did not have the financial resources to uh, prevent it. So buy little things as insecticide, as little as, at that time I think it was going for about 300 or 350. So these students came up with and something. And these students found something that was cheap and all they did, all they did was to find orange peels and process it and uh, it, has, it contains some chemical Everyone. substances mm -hmm. that is used to dispel mosquitoes. Well, has that thing no become cost. a business? Now, there lies the problem. Mm. Uh -huh. Yes, because uh, you need serious funding for further research. So what the students, what we challenge them to do really is to find sustainable solutions to problems. Mm -hmm. the problems that affect real people. To that extent, I would say that we've done a great job. To the extent of upskilling these, I mean, great ideas. And year in, year out, this is some fantastic ideas. I mean, only recently we had another case where a team in Nigeria uh, from Babcock University was able to find an innovative solution to the issue of power. Now, yeah, so... That the, is not solar. That is not solar. Oh. It is hydro, but in a very interesting way. So this technology or innovation would separate water molecules into its two basic components, hydrogen and oxygen, and then utilize the oxygen component in powering so a So nobody generator. has made this business yet? So this is one of the projects that we are now, because it is now time for us really to begin to invest in upskilling some of yeah. these businesses. Move to the next level. So I yes. just wonder why, yes, Axe, why Axe was interested in supporting them, for example. He himself is a story. I mean, <laughs> I mean when you look, when you hear him, I mean... He's so it, passionate yeah, about so, it. I mean, and then you see the journey. Because also, I tell people that investment is not only, it's the business, is, but you have to look at the person that runs the business as well. And so, so this is a business, or an it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business, it it's a social business. business yes. And that's one of the problems that we have in, in non-profit, and that's why they're not sustainable, because they don't see it as a business, but it is a business. Even though it's not his business. It's not his business, but, but it's just I mean, on the board, I mean, as the CEO of that yeah, thing. Yes, so... Now, mm. I promise I'll talk about the NGO. If NGOs are so effective, mm. right, and funded, why would government want to regulate it? Osai, you said that it's regulated everywhere else. It's regulated everywhere else. I, I think regulation is, is key for any industry. It's, it's absolutely key. But what is in that regulation is where the issue is. Nobody's denying the fact that the sector must be regulated. Um, and it's, it's something that we, we've talked about for so many years. I've talked about it for 15 years, regulation for the industry. Because you also That's want true. to be sure that um, people that are coming into the industry on, also understand this. Because we can't go past the sector, no matter how big I am. When they ask me where's the NGO, it's what the sector is. That I, that's where I stop. So we oh. want the sector to grow as well. So, so you are for the you are for it. Yes, I'm for the regulation. But, but what is in the regulation? Well, did they get us involved in it to be able to speak our minds? To because you're an best. NGO too. Yes, we're, we're, and then when you look at the people that are actually bringing about the regulation, who are they? Do they understand the sector? Yeah, the sector must be understood. You can't go and say I, I can't go and I want to go and regulate the financial institution. What do you know about that sector? You have to understand it. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Osai. Mm. You always come last minute regardless, and I appreciate that. Thank you. And I say thank you for watching, but really we have done this so that you will know that if you have a passion, you can go for it and try to do it, but do it right. And
Fortunately, you can get funding around here. We'll see you again next week. That's been Serious This Weekend. Bye.